Good afternoon. The Secretary General and the Foreign Minister of Finland and the Foreign Minister of Sweden will make opening remarks uh, and then they will all take questions. Secretary General. Mr. Havisto, dear Pekka, and uh, Minister Linde, uh, dear Ann, uh, welcome to NATO headquarters. It's great to see you uh, both again. Finland and Sweden are uh, NATO's closest uh, partners. We share the same values and we face the same challenges uh, in the Baltic Sea region and the beyond. Our forces uh, have trained uh, and exercised uh, together for many years. We continue to share information uh, and situational awareness. Uh, and both Finland and Sweden have uh, contributed to NATO missions and operations uh, from the Western Balkans uh, to uh, Iraq. The worsening security situation in Europe makes uh, NATO's cooperation with Finland and Sweden even more important. Today, we discussed um, Russia's continued military buildup in and around Ukraine. The risk of uh, conflict remains real, uh, and we continue to call on Russia to de-escalate and choose the path uh, of diplomacy. NATO is a defensive alliance, which does not threaten uh, Russia or any other country. But we will always do what is necessary to protect and defend all our allies. And I welcome that allies are stepping up. For instance, Denmark is sending a frigate uh, to the Baltic Sea and will deploy uh, more jets to Lithuania as part of our Baltic air policing mission. France has expressed its readiness to send troops to Romania under NATO command. The Netherlands is sending fighter aircraft to Bulgaria uh, for air policing and is putting units on standby for a NATO response force. Spain is sending ships to join NATO naval forces in the Black Sea and the Mediterranean and uh, considering sending jets to Bulgaria. And the United States, for the first time in decades, put the carrier a strike group under NATO command. We are considering to further enhance our presence in the eastern part of the alliance. This could include the deployment of additional NATO battle groups. These deployments are proportionate and in line with our international commitments, and they reinforce European security for all of us. At the same time, NATO remains ready to continue dialogue with Russia. Following the NATO-Russia Council earlier this month, I have now invited all members to a series of further meetings. To address European security, including the situation in and around Ukraine, NATO-Russia relations and how to reduce risks and increase transparency, and arms control, disarmament and non-proliferation. So NATO allies are ready to engage in genuine dialogue and to seek constructive outcomes. And we will continue to consult with our key partners, Finland and Sweden, as we take this dialogue forward. Let me be clear, NATO will not compromise on core principles. We stand for the right of each nation to choose its own alliances. And NATO's door remains open. While NATO cooperates closely with Finland and Sweden, we fully respect your strong and independent security policies. It is for Finland and Sweden alone to decide your own path, not Russia, not anyone else. Sovereign nations have the right to self-determination. NATO will always respect that. Others must respect that too. So, there, uh, Pekka, there, Ann, once again, welcome to both of you. And thank you again for Finland and Sweden's deep friendship and partnership with NATO. Our cooperation makes us all safer and more secure. So then, I give the floor to you, Peter. Thank you, Secretary General Stoltenberg, dear Jens. We had a very good discussion today on the security situation in Eastern Europe and also how it influences to the wider security also in our region and the Baltic Sea region. 
appreciate the dialogue between NATO, Finland and Sweden very much. In the current situation, transatlantic unity is key. Dialogue and diplomatic efforts continue. Seeking ways to increase transparency and trust is welcomed. It's positive that NATO remains open to continue its dialogue with Russia. In this dialogue, of course, both sides are needed. Respecting the core principles of European security is important. Challenging the UN Charter, Helsinki Final Act, and the Charter of Paris for New Europe treaties we have all signed upon undermines international security and the rules-based international order. Defending these principles is now essential than ever. We cannot return back to the Europe with spares of influence and interest. We welcome that NATO has reaffirmed the continuation of its open-door policy. It's a vital element for European security. Continuing the policy is important also for Finland. Finland engages in pragmatic and wide-ranging partnership cooperation with NATO since 1994. In recent years, the partnership cooperation with NATO has taken many steps forward. Finland is one of NATO's six enhanced opportunities partners. The 30 plus 2 cooperation between Finland, Sweden and NATO strengthens stability and predictability in the Baltic Sea region. The cooperation is mutually beneficial. We at last October also had an excellent meeting a visit of NATO Council to Finland. Thank you for that. Finally, Finland is not a member of NATO, but maintaining a national room to maneuver and freedom of choice are also integral parts of Finland's foreign security and defense policy. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you, Jens. <laughs> Sweden's partnership with NATO is a central part of our security and defense policy. Our enhanced opportunity partner status will remain the platform as well as the 30 plus 2 dialogue, which we believe is of mutual importance to Sweden, Finland and NATO. Let me first stress how deeply concerned we are over Russia's military reinforcements around Ukraine and Moscow's aggressive rhetoric. This is already the worst ongoing armed conflict in Europe and there has been almost 15,000 casualties and some 1.5 million internally displaced people. Our support for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity remains firm. European and transatlantic unity is key. I think NATO and EU partners have made it very clear to Russia that there is no place for an armed conflict in Europe and that any further acts of aggression would be met with massive consequences. Sweden has had intense contacts with US and European colleagues within the EU, the OSCE, and with NATO on this issue. My visit here today is one such opportunity to share information and discuss the current very serious situation. I want to thank the Secretary General Stoltenberg for the close dialogue and the cooperation that we have. It is particularly important that we have had this opportunity to meet together with Finland. As always, we cooperate very closely with Finland. We are closely following developments, carefully analyzing the Russian military buildup of troops and hardware. We are preparing for a number of scenarios. Today, we also discussed the proposal put forward by Russia. The core of the proposal is to <clears throat> attempt to rewrite what we call the European Security Order the arrangement for Europe's security that were commonly agreed after the Cold War. One of the main principles of this security order is that every state has the right to choose its own security arrangement, whom it cooperates with, whether to join or stay in a military alliance, etc. This is what Russia wants to roll back, and this is not acceptable. Let me again reiterate that the fundamental principles underpinning the European Security Order must remain non-negotiable. We support a dialogue with Russia on matters such as arms control, rules for military exercises, codes of conduct, confidence building measures. This is something that we are ready to discuss with Russia. Having been the chairperson of the OSE for a year, I think the OSE is the right forum for such discussions. <clears throat> Let me finally and again stress that we support the ongoing diplomatic efforts. We commend NATO for its strong engagement in the present crisis and welcome the dialogue between NATO and Russia. 
We expect Russia to choose to continue the dialogue and accept NATO's offer to organize further meetings in the NATO-Russia Council. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll uh, take questions from here uh, in the press room uh, and also we'll try to take a couple of questions online. Uh, <coughs> we'll go to uh, Swedish TV, gentlemen in the second row. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Secretary General. Uh, what was the outcome of today's meeting and uh, how will this situation affect NATO's relationship with Sweden? For NATO and for me it is extremely important to have very close consultations uh, with uh, Finland and Sweden and to share analysis and to share assessments as we face a, a very challenging security situation uh, in uh, Europe because of the uh, uh, military build-up in and around Ukraine by Russia, and also because of the threatening rhetoric uh, by Russia. Um, and I think we all agree on the need to, to uh, pursue a, a diplomatic path. I, I hope that the, uh, both Aninde and uh, Pekka Havisto on the diplomatic efforts of NATO. The fact that we had a meeting of the NATO-Russia Council for the first time uh, for a long uh, time. Uh, I think that was a positive sign, at least a step in the right direction, and that uh, NATO has invited Russia to participate in further meetings, in a series of meetings in the NATO-Russia Council, and outlined also the different areas we are ready uh, to discuss with uh, Russia. Um, uh, at the same time, of course, we, we, are, we are working for the best, we are hoping for the best, but we have to be pre prepared, prepared for the worst, meaning that we also are, uh, as NATO, are increasing our presence uh, in the eastern part of the, uh, the alliance. Um, you asked about uh, what this means for the relationship with um, NATO and, uh, and Sweden. Well, I think it highlights the importance of the close uh, relationship, that uh, uh, fully respecting the Swedish decision to not be a, a NATO member, we welcome very much the close partnership. Uh, Sweden is a, an enhanced opportunity partner. Uh, Sweden and Finland are our most uh, our closest partners and uh, uh, the fact that we work together, that we share information, that we exercise together uh, is something uh, which uh, uh, is important and the importance is demonstrated in the situation we are faced with uh, now. Uh, let me add uh, finally that uh, I welcome the, uh, the fact that uh, Sweden has uh, reinforced its uh, military presence uh, um, uh, at Gotland because uh, that is important for uh, the whole Baltic Sea. It's a uh, strategic importance for the, for the Baltic Sea. And of course, NATO uh, is present there. We have literal states there. And uh, NATO allies have also uh, increased its presence uh, in the Baltic Sea uh, region. Okay. We'll go to Helsinki Sanomat, lady in the fourth yeah, Mr. Stoltenberg, as you said, uh, NATO is sending reinforcements in Eastern Europe. Could you be a bit more precise what is not NATO's response to increased Russian military presence in the Baltic Sea? <clears throat> so I, I, have, I have listed uh, some of the additional deployments uh, with more uh, air policing, with more naval presence. Currently there are uh, five NATO ships in the Baltic Sea region. We are uh, also strengthening uh, our uh, presence in the air with the, uh, with the air policing. Uh, we already have deployed battle groups, uh, uh, NATO multinational battle groups, to the three Baltic countries and Poland. Uh, and we are, uh, for the first time in a, dec in a decade, we have um, a, a US uh, aircraft carrier group and the NATO command. That, that is not in the Baltic Sea, but of course it matters for the security uh, of uh, the whole of uh, Europe. So we have uh, stepped up, uh, but this is defensive. Uh, NATO is not threatening uh, uh, Russia. It's proportionate. And uh, at the same time as we uh, step up, uh, we also uh, invite Russia to uh, continue our uh, dialogue because we uh, uh, are ready to engage uh, in good faith uh, in, uh, in, in the efforts to find a political uh, solution. We are ready to listen to the Russian security concerns, uh, also in the uh, Baltic region, uh, but we will not compromise on the right for every nation to choose its own path. And that also applies for Sweden, Finland, for, for, for other European nations. 
uh, and not, of course, compromise on NATO's right to protect and defend all allies. But again, the, the, I think what we see now uh, with the increased tensions, the deteriorating security situation just highlights the importance of the very close partnership we have built with Finland and Sweden over the last years, including in the Baltic region with exercises with, uh, with, uh, with a high degree of interoperability um, and, uh, and the very close political consultations that was also demonstrated today with the meeting with the two foreign ministers. Okay, gentlemen over here. Thank you, um, Andreas Liljer and Swedish Public Radio. Um, two questions, if I may. Uh, you talk about increasing the cooperation between NATO and Sweden. Can you be more concrete? What could this increase in cooperation look like? And secondly, uh, we see now an increase in defense capacity in Eastern Europe. Do you see any risks that it, this might actually create further tensions or if it could be used by Russia to to be even more aggressive. Uh, and feel free, if you like, to answer in Scandinavian. Oh. Okay, then I think I answer in Scandinavian. Um, <clears throat> vi uh, verdsetter veldig det nære samarbeidet med uh, Sverige og Finland. Uh, vi øver mer med Sverige og Finland. Uh, vi har en veldig høy grad av uh, interoperabilitet. Det vil si at uh, uh, våre styrker kan operere sammen. Det har vi gjort... Uh, og militære operasjoner fra Irak til eh, Vestbalkan, hvor vi bidrar til å sikre fred og eh, stabilitet. Vi utveksler information. Eh, det er viktig for NATO, men jeg opplever også at det er viktig for Sverige og Finland. Det er ingen andre land som er nære partnere til NATO enn Sverige og Finland. Vi hadde også et veldig vellykket besøk av det nordatlantiske råd eh, til Sverige og Finland i eh, fjor høst, eh, hvor vi både så svenske og finske styrker opererer. Vi så hvordan de øvde sammen, og det understreker det veldig viktige signal vi sender om at dette er nære partners, selv om de ikke er medlemmer av NATO. Vi er beredt til å trappe opp både når det gjelder øvelser, når det gjelder ytterligere tette politiske konstellasjoner, og når det gjelder andre tiltak som kan styrke vår evne til å operere sammen interoperabilitet mellom de tre landene. Dette er arbeid som pågår på mange nivåer, og, og, som, og som er bra for stabiliteten i Europa, og spesielt til det baltiske området. La meg også føye til at det har over de senere årene også blitt en ytterligere forsterking av det nordiske forsvarssamarbeidet mellom eh, Sverige, Finland, Danmark, Norge og Island. Og det er jo et samarbeid som også styrker samarbeidet med NATO, for der har du ikke medlemsland, Sverige og Finland, som samarbeider tettere og tettere med medlemsland som Norge, eh, Danmark og eh, Island. Og det handler blant annet om øvelser i luften, eh, luftforsvar og andre ting. Eh, så det andre spørsmålet ditt. Altså, det, alt vi gjør er defensivt. Eh, det er eh, noe vi gjør for å Både få eh, en god situasjonsforståelse. Vi, vi må øke vårt nærvær for å ha full oversikt over hva som skjer. Eh, så når NATO har økt sitt nærvær, for eksempel i Svartavsregionen, men også i det baltiske området, så er det fordi at når spenningen øker, så er betydning av å ha eh, god eh, og riktig informasjon i sann tid helt avgjørende. Så eh, en del av vårt økte nærvær i eh, Østialiansen er simpelthen for å ha god situasjonsforståelse, eh, eh, som vi også deler med andre eh, land. Det andre er eh, selvfølgelig at vi må sende en, eh, eh, en melding, eller fjerne en vær rom for tvil over NATOs evne til å beskytte eh, alle allierte. Og det er for å forebygge krig og konflikt, eh, og, eh, og det er derfor vi har økt vårt militære nærvær i det baltiske området, og derfor vi nå vurderer å øke ytterligere vårt militære nærvær eh, øst i alliansen, eh, også i eh, Svartehavsregionen. Ok, we'll go to the Finnish news agency, the lady in pink. Thank you, Heta Hasselner from the Finnish news agency. Uh, Secretary General, you already mentioned that the political uh, cooperation and the exercises are very important in this situation. But what else is NATO expecting from its close member, close, close partners, sorry, close partners in this kind of situation? And I would also like to hear from the foreign ministers. 
what is uh, Finland and Sweden? What are you ready to offer for this cooperation in this situation? Thank you. Also, I can be very brief because the one way I've answered also the, the, the main issue is that we work together in many different uh, uh, ways on exercises, on training, on uh, on just improving the way we can operate together. And, and Finland and Sweden have participated in different NATO missions and operations, uh, from Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, maritime deployments uh, to our presence in the Western Balkans. Uh, and, and, and we are all ready to step up and to do more, uh, and also to share more information and to share more situational awareness. And again, when we see high tensions, especially in the Eastern part of the Alliance, and including also in the Baltic region, of course, uh, we share information with uh, Finland and Sweden. They share information with us. That's good for their security. It's good for our security. And, uh, and uh, that is uh, highlighted with uh, the, the, uh, the situation we see uh, uh, now. Maybe from the Finnish perspective, uh, one remark on the current situation when Russia has made the proposals and, and to US and, and to NATO, when these answers are modified by NATO and by US, it's very important that we are aware what is going on and, and that things are not decided over the heads of the countries that are not NATO members or are not directly involved in these talks. And of course, there also comes the importance of the OEC as an organization and the Helsinki Final Act and the Paris Charter and those wider European security principles. This has to be taken into consideration. Secondly, like the Secretary General said, the sharing of the information is, is very important in this kind of, that we have the common analysis of the situation. And then, of course, our experience and our continued, continuing uh, programs for training and, and, and common exercises and, and so forth. So this uh, technical cooperation and military cooperation, of course, is, uh, with NATO has been very intensive and we are doing it on the benefit of our own security and our own defense capability. Yes, just to say, the, I can just uh, agree uh, what a gentleman has said, but uh, also the political dialogue is very important. And uh, there was for several years, there was uh, no taking part of foreign ministers uh, in the foreign ministers' meeting. But now I and uh, Finnish foreign minister have taken part both in Brussels and Riga. Uh, on different kind of important uh, discussions. And uh, for example, uh, when we give our information and analysis of what's happening in the high north and Arctic is where we have also special um, experiences. Uh, so that has been very uh, well received. I also would say it's, it's not like uh, it's a one-way street, uh, as the Secretary General said about uh, Gotland and uh, having uh, um, the possibility in the Baltic Sea for, for also our troops to show that we have a strong defense. I would remind that Sweden has increased our military spending since uh, 2014, when the annexation of Crimea and so on, with 80%. That's quite a high uh, increase in our military spending. We'll go to Kaupalehti, the lady in green. Thank you, Sara Koho. I work for the Finnish paper Kauppalehti. Uh, as we all know, Secretary General, uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin has demanded that NATO stops expanding in Europe. However, um, in a recent uh, interview, the Finnish uh, President Saul Niinistö had with a German newspaper Zeit, he said that in his interpretation, the Russian foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, has withdrawn, withdrawn uh, these uh, demands when it comes to Sweden uh, and Finland. And I would like to know if you share uh, his interpretation. Has Russia withdrawn its demands? What we have seen is what they have proposed in the um, proposals for legally binding agreements or treaties between NATO and, uh, and the Russia. And uh, that was uh, um, um, submitted to us uh, some weeks ago um, in parallel with uh, the um, proposed treaty between Russia and the United States. So there are two proposals on the table uh, for legally binding agreements between Russia and the United States and Russia and NATO. And in uh, the treaty uh, with uh, the proposed draft treaty with NATO, it is clearly stated 
that uh, uh, there should be no further enlargement of uh, NATO uh, with any country. Uh, so, uh, based on that, uh, it is clear what NATO, what, what Russia has demanded, and uh, we are ready to sit down and discuss many issues with uh, Russia on arms control, transparency, and, uh, and the security situation in, in Europe, including the situation in and around Ukraine. But we are not ready to discuss core principles for European security. And as the Finnish uh, president has stated, and many other uh, leaders, both in Finland and Sweden, have stated, is that, is that it is for Finland to decide if they want to apply for membership in NATO, and then it's for Finland and 30 NATO allies to decide, uh, uh, finally, uh, on the issue of membership. And that's exactly the same for Sweden. So uh, I just uh, base my uh, assessments on what Russia has put forward in a written proposal for a legally binding uh, uh, agreement uh, uh, banning any further enlargement of uh, NATO. Uh, and um, my message is that uh, NATO's door remain open, and then we will respect uh, sovereign independent decisions by sovereign independent uh, countries like uh, Finland and Sweden on whether they uh, would like to apply for membership or not. Okay, I see one more question here, and then we'll take a couple online. Gentlemen over here. Heikki Piola from MTV Finland. Uh, USA and uh, United Kingdom have started uh, already to move family members of personnel to leave Ukraine. Should all NATO and EU, EU members do now the same order? This has to be a national uh, uh, decision. We share information uh, among NATO allies. We also share information with the close partners as uh, Finland and uh, Sweden. We have NATO personnel uh, in uh, Kiev. Uh, we have two NATO offices in Kiev. Uh, uh, th we, we have, of course, assess and follow the situation uh, closely, uh, but uh, we have not made any decision to, uh, to withdraw those uh, people working for NATO in, uh, in Kiev. Okay, we'll go online uh, to uh, Club Z Media Group, Momchil Injov. Uh, thank you. Uh, my question is to Secretary General. Uh, well, um, as uh, it became clear today, and you, you told it recently, the NATO allies began to send more ships and jets to enhance deterrence and defense in Eastern Europe. And are there any plans to deploy immediately more troops in the southeastern flank of NATO, especially in Bulgaria, Romania, and, and Turkey? And has NATO made a new risk assessment? And if so, could you please specify? Thank you. Also, we are constantly assessing the risks, and we are constantly sharing information among uh, allies, and we have stepped up our capabilities uh, to collect information. Um, one of the reasons why we have increased our presence uh, in, the, uh, in the Black Sea region is, uh, uh, is just uh, uh, to be able uh, to monitor and to follow the situation very closely to uh, collect more information. So uh, our presence, our increased presence uh, in the eastern part of the Alliance, uh, and in particular in the Black Sea region, uh, is partly to um, collect information to assess the situation uh, very closely, but also, of course, uh, to be uh, able uh, to respond to any uh, situation that will require a, a response from a NATO allied uh, countries. So I think this is prudent behavior. Uh, what we do is defensive. Uh, it's uh, proportionate and it's uh, full in line with our international obligations. And of course, the NATO presence is uh, in no way threatening uh, because it is uh, uh, compared to the significant military buildup by Russia in and around Ukraine, uh, a very limited uh, uh, presence, but it sends a strong signal and message of our unity and our resolve to protect and defend uh, all uh, allies. We are considering uh, um, to further increase our presence um, also in the southeast of the alliance, um, uh, and we are considering also uh, uh, to um, uh, have uh, battle groups. Uh, uh, not only in the Baltic region, but also in Poland, but also in the southeast of the alliance. But no decision has been taken. Uh, we will assess and uh, make the decisions when the time is right. Next question online uh, goes to Terry Schultz from Deutsche Welle. 
Hi, thank, thank you very much. Um, this is a question for, for all three um, officials there. Um, I, I just came back from Sweden, as a matter of fact, and it, it was explained to me that um, the country feels secure without NATO membership because there are so many partnerships um, and also because of the fact that if Gotland, for example, were attacked, it would be in NATO's own interest to come to the defense of Sweden. So do all three of you agree that that is enough of a security guarantee without Article 5 for this region? And then just a second question, because of course I'm reporting for Germany. Um, Mr. Secretary General, are, are you disappointed in Germany um, for the comments of the naval chief? For the comments of the naval chief that said that uh, Russia, that Russian President Putin deserves respect, and also in its in its refusal to allow uh, military equipment from Estonia to be delivered to Ukraine, as Finland, in fact, has has allowed. Thank you very much. Also, first on on the on the, the Article Five, I think I will leave it to the to the Finnish and Swedish uh, uh, foreign ministers to to uh, reflect on that. Uh, as I said, we are, have extremely close partnership with both Finland and Sweden. Then, of course, there is a difference between membership and not membership, and 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 that is something uh, Sweden and Finland has to uh, assess and make their own uh, decisions. We will not interfere or try to influence those discussions in uh, Finland and um, and uh, Sweden. We respect their decisions. Um, uh, then uh, on Germany, also Germany is a NATO ally. They have uh, agreed uh, to uh, send the same messages as uh, we have done in NATO over some time now with uh, both uh, the message of readiness for dialogue with Russia, uh, uh, the NATO-Russia Council, and we are now working on our uh, uh, written proposals that we will convey to Russia in the near future. Uh, and Germany is, of course, uh, strongly part of that, but Germany is also part of the uh, the increased presence in the eastern part of the, uh, the alliance. Uh, Germany is leading the battle group in Lithuania. And, uh, and, uh, and what we do now is that uh, we are uh, uh, stepping up within uh, existing NATO frameworks, the air policing, uh, the standing uh, na uh, naval forces of NATO, uh, and, uh, and other existing uh, NATO uh, forced uh, structures. And again, this is something Germany has agreed to, and, and Germany also contributes. So NATO allies are united in their uh, response to uh, the threatening Russian military buildup, both when it comes to dialogue, but also when it comes to uh, sending a message of unity and uh, strength. From the Finnish perspective, Finland, of course, is a democratic country, and our decisions are based on the opinion of the people and political parties. The majority has not been in favor of the NATO uh, membership, but uh, for the close partnership with NATO, which we cur currently have. And, our defense doctrine builds on maintaining a strong national defense capability. We have a conscription army. We have 280,000 reservists in Finland. We have just made a decision to renew our fighter capacity to F-35 and, and, and so forth. And, and of course, we are increasing our preparedness and, and readiness whenever there are new security concerns. We have been investing also quite a lot to, to, to tackle the hybrid, new kinds of hybrid and cyber threats. But the close cooperation NATO, with NATO, of course, is, an, is something that uh, people support. And I would say that, uh, of course, every country has to uh, see what is the best way of keeping our country and our people out of war, what will keep them safe. And that is how you determine what kind of security arrangement you want to have. And for us in Sweden, we are military non-aligned, uh, and uh, that, that is something that has served us very well during very, very difficult times, and we think it still serves us well together with a strong defense. And I just mentioned here earlier, since 2014, we have increased our uh, defense spending with 80 percent and with close cooperation uh, with uh, other partners. We have about 20 agreements with countries, uh, NATO countries, uh, other countries, uh, organizations, and the closest uh, partnership we have is with Finland. Thank you very much. This concludes this press conference. Thank you. Thank you so much.